Hello, Namaste, and good morning. I'm Niraj Acharya. I am from uh, Nepal Research and Education Network. And here we are, uh, our uh, uh, technical members from our uh, member institutions. And uh, you, it's better to introduce yourself, right? So uh, I think um, I agree to all uh, uh, of the participants. But you introduce yourself one by one by one. Or if there is any uh, confusion, I'll uh, tell the name. Okay, uh, I'll call the name. So please, Rajanji, proceed from your side. So, <clears throat> so good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm Rajan Barazuli, uh, representing here Nepal Research and Education Network. Uh, we have uh, 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 members, uh, engineers from various memory institutions. So yeah, that's that's all from my side. Yeah, actually, uh, due to the health reason, so I will just listen uh, because few days back I got infected. Uh, for COVID-19, so currently taking rest. Thanks. Anirajanji? Hello everyone, my name is Nirajan Parajuli. I'm working in NREN. Uh, I'm a core member of EDUROOM development team of NREN. Uh, we successfully deployed EDUROOM in NREN member institute. Uh, thank you. Okay. But... Terry, I think you should uh, introduce yourself. I think the mic is mute. I am not listening. Uh, there is a anybody of uh, using uh, you. You are listening, uh, Terry. No. Okay, right now. Yeah. Turn it off. Uh, Terry Smith from the Australian Access Federation, uh, also chair of the uh, Identity and Access Management Task Force of APAN and chair of the Education Hearing Group or committee and many other tasks that I do. Um, we're here today to uh, introduce you and your members to uh, Identity Federation um, and the benefits that that can have uh, for your researchers and staff and students at your universities. And I've got with me today Dahlia, who um, will introduce herself. Yeah. Hello, everyone. My name is Dahlia Abraham. I also work for Australian Access Federation. I'm in Terry's, Terry's team. And we've also got Brooke, who's an independent at the moment. Yeah. So this is me. I, I used to be Terry in a former life. Right? So, so I used to be I'm the immediate past chair of uh, Edugain uh, Steering Group. Um, I used to work at Jayant. Uh, you might have met me. I attended an apricot in, uh, in Nepal in, uh, hmm, what year would that have been? Maybe 2017? Um, so, in when? 18. 18 in February. Yeah. Okay. So I, uh, I attended, uh, uh, visited Nepal, but obviously didn't uh, uh, attend the uh, APAN 49 in, uh, in Nepal that was uh, cancelled at the start of COVID. And uh, I think uh, Nepal has put their hands up to, uh, to host APAN 55 in uh, February 2023. So at the slow rate of the Australian uh, vaccination rollout it might be finished by then. Um, and so um, I'm, yeah. I was also the secretary of the Global Edgerome Governance Committee. Okay. So I worked on the, the, the rollout of Edgerome and Edugain, um, often in everywhere other than Europe. So uh, particularly uh, uh, Central, uh, Central Caribbean yeah, and Latin yeah, America so that's what um, I'll have and in the Asia Pacific. And that's um, what I continue to do because there's quite so a few gaps in, a, the, in the community in that regard. Response. Okay, thank you. Uh, 
Dibya, uh, uh, Ji, from Enron. Please introduce yourself. Hi, good morning, everyone. I am Dibya, and I'm also staff at Enron. And I've been involved with Enron for like past two years since it started. And uh, I'm very happy to be at this um, talk today. Thanks. Uh, next, uh, Dinesh sir from Mech. Good morning, everyone. I'm Dinesh Nangal from Nepal Engineering College. Uh, Nepal Engineering College is affiliated with Pokhara University. Uh, I'm, uh, I belong to uh, Computer Science and Engineering Department, and I was, uh, I'm a former System administrator of uh, Nepal University College. Mm, thank you. And I have heard a message. I have got a message from the Nams Bir Hospital is on the way. Uh, uh, so if uh, I think he is not in the, the the position of the talking, so we move to the past. Uh, Pramodji, please introduce yourself. Hello, Namaste everyone. This is Pramod from Patan Academy of Health Science. This is a medical university. And thank you for inviting me to participate in this event. Uh, I would like to request Pancha Dev Bhatta, sir. Uh, uh, thank you. Good morning and Namaste everyone. Uh, it's me, Pancha Dev Bhatta from Midwestern University, uh, located at Surkit. Uh, capital city of Karnadi province, Nepal, and I'm working as assistant professor and IT expert at Office of the Vice Chancellor. Uh, thank you. Namaste, everyone. Thank you, sir. Uh, I'd like to request um, Rajesh, sir, from Karnadi University. Rajesh, sir. Okay, we'll uh, Saran Sreshta, sir, from uh, Dilikhan. Please can you introduce yourself, sir? Okay, next, uh, Sivaram, sir, from uh, Papa College. Hello, everyone. Myself, Sivaram Awal from Koba Engineering College. I'm working as system administrator here for 10 years. Thanks. Uh, Susil Vattasar from PU. Uh, Okay, we have got a mic issues from uh, Suresh sir, uh, Susil Water sir. Uh, so uh, Again, Rajesh Reshta and uh, Saran Reshta, if you are listening, uh, uh, request you to introduce yourself and then we'll move away, uh, forward for our uh, other program. Okay, so uh, I'll wrap up the introduction. Uh, here and I request, I'd like to request and uh, to uh, give some uh, uh, explanation about the IAM system, IAM federation, and uh, what is EDRAM. Uh, I think uh, we are waiting for your uh, uh, presentation. Okay, I'll allow you to share the screen. Uh, 
Okay, uh, there you can share the screen. So you can see the presentation in the Access Federation? Yes. Okay, cool. So, uh, Identity Access Federations, um, this is a sort of brief introduction to what they are and how they could benefit uh, NREN and its uh, members, which are you guys. Um, this is part of a project that we've been working on throughout the past 12 months called IFAR, Increasing Federated Identity and something else, something else. I can never remember what the last two letters are. But, um, it's being funded by Asia Connect, TNC, Star, Star, Star CC, and uh, eventually through the European Union. Um, it's a follow-on project from a previous project that Brooke and I have worked on at Dahlia called Backfire. And it's basically bringing up uh, identity federations in nations across the Asia Pacific region. So the IFIR's project uh, objectives, it's uh, aiming to increase the number of identity federations uh, globally, uh, to increase the number of federations connected to EDUGAIN, and I'll talk about EDUGAIN uh, shortly. It's uh, trying to increase the utility and awareness of established federations across the region, and it's uh, trying to build on existing best practices from uh, the 70 plus federations that are already out there and have uh, been down the path of building a federation themselves. So we're trying to help uh, nations in the region to fast track their federations based on the learnings of uh, many who have gone before. Uh, our aims are to provide uh, hands-on training and this project we've run three workshops, uh, one in virtual Hong Kong, one in virtual Australia and one in virtual Pakistan. All these virtual meetings are as a result of um, the pandemic, which we're all suffering from. Uh, we're also aiming to provide mentoring and develop mentors across the region. Um, and I think we've been fairly successful in that area uh, to develop some communal support. Uh, so to basically build a community of NRENs that uh, share and support each other. Uh, identify marketing and training resources for NRENs to provide to institutions such as yourselves and train the trainer so that uh, the NREN team has the skills and abilities to train and help you as uh, university admins to join your National Identity Federation and identify opportunities to aid the growth and sustainability of the Federation. Um, once it gets going, it needs to grow, it needs to be sustainable, it just can't just uh, sit there and weather away. So that's the, the project's aims. Um, oops, too far, sorry, back that up. Got one more, I'm going away, sorry. Previous. So hopefully, I've got a little video to show. Uh, hopefully the volume will come through. This is just a short video uh, introduction to the Australian Access Federation. Um, but it'll hopefully give you a bit of an idea of what uh, Federation's all about uh, for yourselves. So let's see if this will play. I'm not hearing the audio, Terry. Maybe when you uh, you have to stop screen sharing and start it and check the magic, you know, also do sound or something. Okay, I'll try that. Sharing and ah, there's a shared sound one. Come on. 
was for video clips. Okay, we'll try that again. It's sharing. Do your users need to access multiple online services? Wouldn't it be great if they could access hundreds of services with one username and password? Then look no further. The Australian Access Federation provides your users with a simple way to log in and access online services from within your network or from external providers. Users usually require a different username and password for each service, which can become impossible to remember. However, the Australian Access Federation solves this problem. By simply connecting to the AAF, our users will only need one username and password to access all of your online services, as well as numerous other services from national and international organisations. It's that easy. Your AAF connection provides a trusted and secure solution that connects your users to the services they need. Join numerous organisations who are already connected to the AAF with over a million users. To find out more, visit aaf.edu.au. So that's that's what we do in Australia. That's the Australian Access Federation. And hopefully um, we'll get the uh, NREN Federation uh, available for you in the next uh, little while. Uh, but before we really get into what is an identity federation, I'd just like to sort of try and differentiate an identity federation from Edurome, because we do get a lot of questions about uh, why we've got Edurome, don't we, do we need any more? And there is uh, some significant differences between an identity federation and Edurome. Uh, first off, the purpose of the identity federation is to allow users to log into web-based services. So, whereas the purpose of Edurome is to connect a device to your wireless infrastructure. So there's some significant differences there. Um, the standards are fairly different uh, for identity federations. The, primary, the current primary standard is SAML 2.0, but there are moves to um, OpenID Connect as the federation standard. Whereas in Edgerome, uh, it's, it's more networky type uh, standards such as 802.1x, which just allow for authentication to pass over the wire. Uh, also, the technologies that are being used the, uh, to implement and run the Identity Federation, uh, the primary thing is uh, the use of the web browser and identity providers at organisations where the user resides or studies or researches, and service providers where the resources that uh, service uh, students and staff and researchers want to access are. As compared to Edgerome, uh, using radius, wireless access points and wireless devices. So Edgerome's more a technical sort of disconnect and away you go. Whereas Identity Federation is a web browser type thing. It's passing a lot more information to the service about the user to allow them to get the right access to the uh, applications, the tools, the services that they want to get access to. Uh, there's a couple of diagrams there that I've stolen from other federations, uh, which sort of again highlight the differences. But there are some commonalities between the two uh, federations, They're effectively federations, but both of these um, can share the same identity store, allowing the users to use the same credentials, the same username and password can be used for the identity federation as it can be used for Edgerome. So, there are some, there are benefits of having both, and uh, a lot of uh, nations are putting up both uh, federations and to improve the uh, access to both the uh, physical infrastructure and to services uh, provided in the federation. So identity federations, all about having one username, one password to access uh, many, many services. And there are a number of uh, players in an identity federation. So there's the home organization, and that's the uh, organization where the staff, the students, the researchers uh, work, study, uh, and do their research activities. And the home organization is um, 
responsible for a number of activities in participating in the Federation. First, they must join the Federation and uh, NREN will, when they're ready, provide a series of steps or guidelines or process to actually join the Federation. Uh, there is some uh, documentation that your organisation will need to sign because the Federation is based on a policy framework uh, to provide the trust in the Federation. So your NREN uh, will set up this trust uh, fabric, this trust um, policy arrangement, and uh, your organisation will sign up and join the uh, Federation. Your organisation is also responsible for issuing your staff, your students and your researchers their usernames and passwords, their credentials in some sort of provisioning process. So they will need to uh, manage those passwords and possibly provide some sort of self-service password management tool so that the students and staff can uh, uh, own their own credentials, change their passwords when they need to, uh, have a option possibly to um, recover a lost password or a forgotten password. And you, as an organisation, you also need to provide a federated login page. And to the right is an example of one of our um, federated login pages. Uh, this is a login page for a research institution within Australia. It's our Australian Antarctic Division. It's a, actually a government organisation and they've chosen to participate in the AAF um, to allow their researchers to access services that are provided in the AAF. Um, by joining the Federation, as an organisation joining the Federation, there are a number of opportunities that uh, will uh, appear out of that. Uh, there'll be an opportunity to move your, your infrastructure to a single sign-on. Um, which will improve the user experience logging in, not just to federated services, but to potentially uh, services within your university, uh, your student administration system, your student uh, portal, your student uh, learning management systems, um, your staff portals, your staff email, all of those could be benefit by becoming part of a single sign-on infrastructure that also includes or encompasses the federation as well. Uh, it allows you to improve your local identity management. Um, if you have an identity management, there's an opportunity to improve it. If you don't have one, there's an opportunity to put one in place. Um, having an automated identity management solution that uh, adds people and removes people as their roles or their association with your universities change um, will save you a lot of effort and time in manually provisioning accounts. It will leave, lead to improved security, as so there'll only be, um, you'll minimise the, uh, the attack surface. There'll only be one login page that uh, you can really harden up uh, with your security protocols and stuff. Uh, you can also then start to think about applying multi factor authentication for your users to, again, um, help your users protect themselves from phishing attacks and. Uh, other um, types of uh, security threats that they may see. It's just only a username and password. So that's what the home organisation needs to do if they want to participate in the Federation. Uh, in Australia, all of our universities are participating and we have uh, most of our peak research organisations are participating. We have one health department, one of our state's health departments is in the Federation. and uh, we're continually growing and getting more and more people who are trying to do research in Australia and get them as being part of the Federation. The Federation's also about services. I'm talking to someone now. Um, it's weird. Why can't I see that? Bear with me. Okay, um, so services in the Federation. Uh, there are different categories of services. Um, 
there's collaboration services, uh, things like wikis, video conferencing, file sharing, voting, scheduling, timetabling. Uh, there's publishers. There's many, many publishers that are available through um, the Federation. Uh, publishers are tending to prefer identity federations over IP address based authentication. And there's a big move away from things like easy proxy or VPN type access to provide a person with just a single, um, or the university just have a single point of entry into publisher services. Um, having federated authentication gives the user a much a much better experience when they hit the, uh, the well, access publishers. And there's a bunch of research type services or tooling that you can uh, connect your federation to. In Australia, we've got uh, Jupyter Notebooks available. Um, we've got lots of data sharing happening. We've got a number of Galaxy um, cloud services. We've got uh, a number of Red Cap services sharing medical research information and uh, data. Uh, and beyond that, we can connect out to global research initiatives such as LIGO and CERN. And this is the uh, ORCID um, uh, identifiers, which can be part, uh, used uh, using federated identity to authenticate to your ORCID record. And there's uh, other types of services. Uh, the student life type services where students can get discounts to music, to social, uh, activities to food, to clothes, to airfares, um, lots of discounting services. And then there's EDUGAIN. So EDUGAIN is a federation of federations. Uh, currently there is about 70 federations uh, globally that are connected to EDUGAIN. And from those 70 federations, there are over 3000 services available to select from. And there are over 4,000 universities and research organizations that are connected to EDUGAIN that can share and use those services. So we, we believe that the, your NREN or NREN needs to work towards joining EDUGAIN so you as a university and uh, uh, colleges can uh, take the, uh, get the best value out of being part of the Federation and get access to all of those services and allow uh, researchers in other organizations to collaborate with your researchers in your nation. Uh, sharing within Nepal, uh, universities and uh, research organizations within Nepal can share their services once they're part of the Federation. Um, you can enable access across organizational boundaries. So if you have a team of researchers from a number of your universities working on a project, that uh, project can hook up to the Federation, enable single sign-on, allow those researchers to collaborate together uh, while using their home credentials to do so. So there's a improved user experience, improved security, and actually a reduction in management effort to set this stuff up for um, adding and managing credentials, because there's no need to add credentials to each and in every service. Uh, in Australia, the AAF has over 240 locally connected services. As I said earlier, all uh, Australian universities are connected. And we have a focus on supporting research across our nation. Um, federations can have different focus points. Ours from its get-go was to support research. Uh, other federations are supporting different uh, approaches have, and they're trying to encourage access to publishers. Um, others are doing uh, other types of, uh, have other, as a, other, uh, other focuses, but it's generally research or access to publishers. NREN and the Federation. So what NREN needs to do to uh, set up the Federation? To provide the tech, they need to provide some technology. So they need to build some infrastructure to support the National Identity Federation. And there's just a few pieces they need to provide. They need to set up a federation registry. That's just a technical piece that collects the information about all the technical components of the federation. 
They need to provide a metadata distribution point, and metadata is just the technical details about each of the endpoints, the IDPs and the service providers. And they need to provide a discovery service, and we'll have a look at the AAF's discovery service after this, after I've gone through this presentation. Uh, NREN also needs to provide some federation rules, and as I said earlier, this builds trust in the federation. And it provides a trust framework. So everyone's living and working within this trust framework. And it makes it therefore easier to collaborate and share information across this fabric. And NREN also needs to at some point join Edugain so you can take advantage of all of those services that are available in Edugain. There's 3,000 plus services. Um, so just on the Federation rules, uh, there's templates available. Um, we need the, or they'll need the community to engage in developing and testing these rules for Nepal. Um, most federations take the templates and tweak them to their own needs but, uh, and then uh, verify them that they are acceptable for potential membership from your universities and colleges. And the universities and research organizations need to agree to follow these rules when they join. Uh, finally, NREN needs to uh, provide a name for its federation. Um, it should have meaning to its members. It should relate to, in some way, access and identity. And it must be easy to remember, because this is a, a really useful marketing tool to uh, help people know and uh, understand that uh, they're actually logging into an identity federation. Uh, it's a couple of examples, good examples that we've seen. So New Zealand have named their federation Tirakiri. And it's a Maori word that means person, personality, identity. And Bangladesh has recently brought up their federation. It's currently going through the process of joining Edugain. And they've named their federation Tiger Federation. And uh, Tiger, the tiger is the, uh, the national animal for Bangladesh. Um, so that's why they've, they've chosen that because it's got meaning to, the, uh, to their members. Federation has been a bit of a chicken and egg problem for uh, early adopters um, coming in as you are. At this point, this is not going to be such a problem uh, because uh, previously new Federation problems, uh, you need services to attract identity providers to join and you need identity providers to attract service providers to join. So which comes first? By joining Edugain as soon as you possibly can, the service provider problem goes away because you have up to 3,000 services that uh, you can connect to as an organization. So, uh, as I say here, Edugain solves the problem with many, many services available. So, Nepal needs an identity federation to be able to join Edugain. So, you need to kick start it with the identity federation part. Uh, so you need to ask, or anyone needs to ask itself, will it step up to this task of providing federated access to publishers, to reduce costs, to improve user experience, and to improve, improve uh, the security. Uh, running these sessions, which is what we're doing now, is uh, one way to let everyone know that uh, anyone is actually trying to step up this task of setting up their identity federation. So good work. Uh, federation for research researchers. So this is going beyond just your basic federation. Um, the basic identity federation provides a single sign-on authentication across organisational boundaries. It doesn't provide authorization. Authorization has traditionally been left to service providers. Um, Today, the, some of the advanced federations, such as the Australian Access Federation and In Common, which is the uh, United States Federation, and the UK Federation uh, are moving towards tackling some of these uh, more advanced uh, access and identity management uh, problems at a global scale. Um, and some of the activities that they're investing their efforts into and uh, moving forward in this space are listed below. Um, there's the AARC, the Advanced, I'm hopeless with acronyms, I should write them down. 
Uh, it's a blueprint for allowing for uh, authorization at a and uh, a bunch of other stuff at a global scale. Uh, there's another group called Seamless Access, which is looking at improving the user experience, again, at a global scale to make uh, access and the whole workflow uh, much more seamless for the users. And there's been a couple of papers that have been written uh, that uh, are targeted at various groups. There's a paper called Federated Identity Management for Libraries, and that's targeted at librarians to try and show them the benefits of joining a federation. And similarly, there's a Federated Identity Management for Researchers paper, which is targeted at researchers and showing them the benefits that they can gain out of putting their services into the federation or connecting their, their users and so forth to the federation. So, uh, NREN is, uh, I believe, planning to start setting up their identity federation, but it needs your help as uh, organisations. So you need to understand what uh, so what does your organization need to join to connect to benefit uh, you need to help nren name its federation you need to help nren develop their federation rules and you need to help by identifying services which would benefit your university and let uh, nren know which services that uh, you think they should be uh, targeting first to provide across your nation um, for example Sri Lanka uh, during the pandemic set up a Zoom service to allow researchers, staff, students uh, to get easy access to Zoom. Uh, um, that's the, the full version, the licensed version of Zoom uh, with minimal cost. And they did that and uh, it was a very popular service. It's uh, continuing to be a very popular service. Uh, that uh, they're running. Um, other federations will pick other sort of key services. Uh, and you've got to sort of think about what services would be a benefit to you, your universities, and to collaboration across your nation. So that's that one. So is there any questions before I give you a little bit of a demonstration of... Um, uh, the Australian Access Federation. Are there any questions come up in the chat as I was chatting away? No questions? Okay, so. It can be a bit daunting when you first sort of are thrown at this stuff and uh, trying to understand it. Um, it took me a while to uh, really get into the understanding of this stuff. But uh, where is Hello. I think you better give some links and some uh, reference uh, for uh, them to. Uh, read some uh, documents and uh, other things uh, for uh, if you get any yeah. that would be I'll, I'll, I'll share the the slides with uh, with you guys um, once the meeting's finished through the NREN and uh, provide some links to um, a group called Refeds, which is the Research and Education Federations uh, group, and it's a global organisation that provides a lot of useful documentation information guides and so forth about what uh, federation identity federation is all about so let's just share this one that's wrong sorry Okay, now we're good to go. Sorry about that. Again. So 
So this is just a couple of quick demonstrations um, about what we provide in the uh, Australian Access Federation. Uh, this is Australian Access Federations is the federation operated in Australia, oh, we're the operator, provide a login framework for research and education community. Uh, we're a not-for-profit organisation and we're owned and governed by the Australian research and education sector. So, uh, we are separate from our NREN, but um, your NREN will be most likely setting up your identity federation. Uh, we enable researchers to securely access national and international research and collaboration infrastructure. Um, and why we provide the login, the federated login, so it allows users to use their existing login details to seamlessly access shared resources and services nationally and internationally. Uh, basically, one username, one password to access lots of stuff. It's also a highly secure and reliable environment and we, uh, we deliver to our, thing, our members and it provides a trusted and secure solution to our members. And we've got members like uh, the Children's Medical Research Institute, uh, the CSIRO, which is our peak research uh, body, Shamri, which is another medical research institution in South Australia, uh, Garvin Institution, uh, New South Wales Health. So these are a lot of the, uh, the health organisations that are participating. As I said, we've got all of the universities and uh, a number of other research organisations. So how does it actually work? What does it look like from the user's uh, point of view? So a user will log in or go to a service and they'll find a login button that they want to log in at. But they want to log into the service. The service says, well, that's nice, but I don't, I'm part of this federation and I don't know which organization you're from. That then sends them off to the second step where they will be redirected to the uh, AAF Select Your Home Organization page. And this page will just list out all the organizations that are part of the federation, allowing the user to select their organization where they can log in. Uh, the, the organization, uh, uh, yeah, they need log in at their organization. Once they've logged in, they're sent back to the service. Uh, and because of the, the trust in the federation, the service trusts that the identity provider has successfully authenticated the user and the user is a trusted user at that organization. So the user is allowed to access the service. So using this trust relationship, sensitive data is digitally encrypted while in transfer, keeping the identity data private at all times. And the AF does not store or have access to any usernames or passwords and neither do any of the services. All of the usernames and services are held at the university or at the home organization of the user. And that's where one of the big uh, security benefits uh, come. Uh, there's no way that the uh, Federation will allow the user's credentials to escape to uh, either the AAF or to services within the Federation. Um, and the Federation makes the, the access uh, convenient, simple, secure and reliable. So we've got uh, the service, it's called um, Cloud Store. It's a uh, a file sender type service. Um, it's provided by Arnet, which is uh, the Australian's national research education network. It's the equivalent of NREN in Nepal. And CloudStore pro provides a file syncing, file sharing, file storage service. And it allows secure transfer of virtually any file type, regardless of size. And because Arnet provides the high speed network, across Australia, um, moving those files in and out of cloud store is generally fairly quick as well, because it's a high speed fiber cable, fiber network uh, across the whole of Australia. Um, to access cloud store service by the AF, the, um, the user or the organization must be a member of the AF, that's a subscriber to the AF, and they must, the user must have an active username and password from their organization. 
So we'll just take you through a log into that. Now, can you see that um, that login screen? No, we can't. It is somehow okay, grayed on. out as a as a security feature. Right? Yeah. Whole screen this one. So now, can you see a? Yes, we can. Cool. So this is CrowdStore. It's got a login. Yeah, so I actually remember that I've been here before because my organization is the, the uh, AAF and we've got a, an identity provider called the Virtual Home. But under here, I could actually pick any of these identity providers, all the universities, CSIRO, we've caught it, Ansto, Ames, Arnett. Uh, was New South Wales Health. New South Wales Health. So this is asking me now to select which identity provider from, and I'll select the virtual home. Double click that. And now it's taken me to my organization's login page uh, where the, my browser has remembered who I am and I can sign in. Uh, this is now telling me that. Uh, this information about myself will be sent to CrowdStore. And I, as a user, have the option of um, approving that uh, release of my personal information to CrowdStore. Uh, and I can just say, yes, ask me every time. If I reject, then CrowdStore won't be able to function and it'll just say you're. It, it won't work, but I'll approve that. It's now sending me back to Cloud Store, uh, which now lets me do stuff. I can see some files. I can see some activity. I've got a file sender thing. And within this, I have another service embedded within it called Swan. Uh, like this, we're off. And this is just a Jupyter Notebook. So I've got a Jupyter Notebook, which can access the files that I've stored uh, in Cloud Store previously. Hopefully it will do something. There we go. So it's going to be a number of uh, options that I can set up. Uh, I can launch one of these guys. And now I have a terminal session where I can actually do stuff. And I can actually see those files that are actually listed down the side, um, of, which are in actually part of Cloud Store. Yep, so that's pretty cool. I can actually access files. I can move files in and out, send them to Cloud Store and so forth. And I should terminate that. Close it down. So that's that's one service that I can get access to. Uh, another service is um, uh, Nectar Research Cloud. I can access it again through um, this uh, the federation. This time I need to go to. Oops, sorry. What? I'll just type in because I know that. So this is Nectar, which is uh, provides me a access to virtual machines. Um, it's based on what is it based on again? Cloud stock, uh, cloud stack, I think. The login. Now, this is actually connected to two federations. It's connected to both Terry Kerry and to the Australian Access Federation. So it's asking me which federation I'm from first. I tell it I'm from the Australian Access Federation or Australia. 
It's again asking me which organization I'm from. It's got a slightly different format because this is the Australian AF's discoveries mechanism. And if I select the virtual home, it's telling me what attributes it wants to release, but it didn't ask me to log in again because uh, it's remembered me that uh, I've already logged in to this browser, to the AF in a, uh, uh, when I went to Cloud Store. So I don't have to type in my credentials every time I log into a service. It's a single sign-on stuff happening. I log into Cloud Store, oh, sorry, Nectar. And as you can see, I've been doing a bit of work. I've got 19 virtual uh, CPUs that I'm using at the moment. Uh, if I go here, I can look at the instances that I'm playing with. So I'm doing some, got a couple of Ubuntu instances, a whole bunch of CentOS stuff. And I've been doing some work uh, setting up some IDP infrastructure. Uh, Dahlia and I use this. Uh, this whole cloud store thing, it's a really great service. It gives us access to um, uh, up to 20 uh, virtual machines that we can uh, do experiments on, test with, and so forth. Uh, going beyond the AF, there's uh, the Atlas of Pathology, um, which is actually a service in uh, another federation, um, the Czech Federation, and it allows me to access. Um, a bunch of uh, images. And this time, this one is connected to many, many federations. Uh, we can see Tirukiri here, we can see the AAF. Uh, it's also got to Edugain as well listed, so that's another mechanism that you can come in. We click on the AF. Again, it's taken me to the uh, discovery page because it doesn't know where I'm from. It's only I'm from here again. It only wants my email address this time. I'll approve that. Uh, now I'm logged into this uh, atlas of pathology images and I can go trolling around and look for stuff. Not that I'll use this one much. So that's a bit of a quick guided tour of the Federation. Stop sharing that. Let's that one. So the, um, the AAF, we've got some chat thing happening. Yep, so the Australian Access Federation has been running for over 10 years now. I think we're coming up to year 11. Um, we've got a fairly big team because uh, we have a software development team as well as a support team, a comms team and a project team. Um, our teams, our project team's doing a whole lot of the more advanced stuff. Um, we're working with uh, bio, Bio community, biocoms community, um, working on uh, some advanced federation uh, activities, specifically around uh, allowing or disallowing specific access to services. Um, the, the types of uh, data the um, researchers want access to is medical records, and to get access to medical records, it needs to be very specific. Um, who's allowed, what sort of level of access they're allowed to have, uh, what sort of activities they plan to be doing with it. There's a whole lot of um, work that's happening in that space. Uh, so they're doing some really advanced, uh, cool stuff. Um, but we continue to add more services, connect more institutions to Edugain. Um, so it's, uh, it's basically a full-time uh, activity for us just to keep the Federation going. Uh, but uh, our researchers are really benefiting, benefiting from it. Um, we're seeing uh, many papers that are being written as uh, a result of having the Federation available. 
We are always talking to our government about how we can improve the Federation, how we can improve uh, the research outcomes in Australia based on uh, the activities of the Federation, the collaboration opportunities that are available uh, through the Federation. Um, so we're, we're here to help um, NREN uh, to become a Federation and to join the Federation. And we're just looking for you as uh, universities and uh, colleges and research organizations uh, to also lend a hand in uh, helping NREN to, to stand up their Federation, get their policies happening and so forth. And uh, hopefully one day soon, there'll be a Federation in Nepal that uh, will be part of the global community. So is there any questions or uh, comments or feedback or anything that you'd like to ask? Happy to end. Yeah, so, so far, there have been, oh, I'll slide that across. Um, so far, there's been uh, two good uh, uh, questions from uh, Dinesh, who introduced himself at the start of the, of the session, um, about whether you can connect to uh, services like uh, whatever Google Apps for Education. When I did it, it used to be called Google Apps for Education. But uh, whatever G Suite is now, and uh, actually we had a demo just recently. Andre from uh, the Indonesian uh, Federation has actually, um, uh, you know, uh, connects to their uh, Google instance using their SAML uh, IDP. So they have this uh, seamless uh, login uh, for all of their staff and students. Now I believe that the Google um, provisioning app you can either provision people real time which means you can't send an email to someone until they've logged in, or you can use the, the Google uh, API to provision accounts for people ahead of them logging in. Obviously, it's a, it's a problem if you only create accounts when students log in. It means if students don't log in until partway through the semester or whatever, any sort of preparatory emails that may have been sent won't be delivered because they don't have accounts, right? So there's obviously an issue there. Um, uh, Dinesh also asked whether you can connect external service providers, right? or can external services API. That API is in effect the, the SAML authentication workflow. So the user uh, through their browser, they log into the IDP and then they pass through uh, a set of attributes. Now you'll see during Terry's demo, Different applications require different and can be as simple as someone logged in to this IDP successfully. Like that's the minimum amount of information that you can send uh, to when he uh, when he joined the, the Nectar service or whatever, it, it only wanted his email address, but it would also send the information he logged in successfully. Strangely enough, it doesn't send the, you didn't log in successfully, the not logging in successfully messages uh, uh, redundant in this regard um, uh, and then you can send in uh, there was one where uh, it even included Terry's phone number and lots of other information about you you know so different services can vary uh, what they need to know about you um, and they should always try to limit that um, it's amazing people want to know a lot of information about you it's just whether they need to and it's amazing what you can get away with, you know, offering people. Um, the reason journal companies like this is journal companies, often because of, you know, Californian and European legislation on data protection, they actually don't want to know about you, right? They, what they want to know is that your institution has paid for a subscription and the person that's logging in is affiliated with a subscription, uh, with an institution that's paid a subscription. That's all they're really interested in. Um, uh, the only reason they had to have accounts once upon a time is because there was no other way. And, and because of the costs of data leaks and the, uh, the negative side of that, uh, services actually don't want to hold on to private information about you because it can cost them money. If, if they get hacked, that data gets leaked. Um, and depending on the jurisdiction they operate in, they can receive substantial fines. So there's actually an incentive to not store information about you know, the staff and students of your institutions. Um, and, and it also means you, know, you can improve the security controls uh, around those login systems. So you know, Terry was using services that use username and password. 
Some can uh, be modified to use uh, uh, two-factor authentication, push notifications to mobile phones or hardware dongles. Um, and that can be done on a, on a per application basis. And certain applications will say we need higher quality um, uh, authentication. And then you know, if, you're, if your institution doesn't support that, the person can't log in, but you don't have to roll that out to everyone. So there, there's the, in the way uh, the service can be provisioned in the way that it provides identity information, uh, attributes about people, and and also um, you know the, the authentication mechanisms that, uh, that that they can mandate. Okay, so um, any questions before we hand it back to Nurja? Uh, Well, thanks for listening. Hope you have uh, got something useful out of it, and I hope you uh, help your NREN or help NREN become a federated uh, operator, a federation operator in the near future. Okay, thank you, uh, uh, Terry and uh, Brooke and uh, Dalia for uh, your uh, presentation and your explanation about I AF and the uh, federation. Uh, thank you. Uh, uh, Thank you for all the participants from our uh, engineers from the uh, institutional member institutions. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, please don't hesitate to uh, text it or to ask it. Uh, uh, and also we continue our interaction from email and other things. Uh, so if uh, I think there is no any questions. Uh, so thank you again. Uh, Rajanji, anything uh, or anybody, if you have anything, uh, so here is the link that join Slack, please uh, give your feedback, please see on the chat, uh, there is Yeah, I, I mean, I don't know if you have uh, mailing lists that you can join um, uh, or actually through the meeting invite, we have the uh, addresses of most of these people. Um, so there's, you know, the, the task force mailing list, except I'm not too sure. Is the task force mailing list server up, Terry? Yeah, it's still running. It doesn't get much use, though. I know it's it doesn't get much point. use. But I was, oh, yeah, because it gets the at least the... Uh, Program committee mailing lists uh, messages come through that, right? Uh, maybe the box has changed names, or it's very, very slow for me at the moment. Um, so yeah, there's the there's the wider uh, task force on identity and access management run through uh, APAN that uh, Terry chairs. Um, we also have uh, an APAN Slack where uh, a lot of people hang out, and there was actually a training course run by. Um, uh, learn the Sri Lankan NREN, where a lot of people uh, um, they use that mechanism to to ask questions because sometimes the question asking and response in uh, in uh, Zoom isn't um, isn't always great. Um, yeah. But there's a lot of people out there, and an increasing number of people that are out there willing to uh, uh, willing to help and provide advice and guidance. In fact, there was um, a thing that I did. What I often like to do is just search people's uh, domain names and looking for login buttons just to see the number of applications that have, you know, uh, proliferated within your environment. And a lot of these services will all look different. And this becomes uh, problematic because uh, often... Well, maybe you don't, but I know many people do send around, uh, you know, alerts regarding phishing emails. And when your um, 
when your login websites all look different, uh, it's very hard to educate your users that these are legitimate websites and that phishing attempts to try and steal your usernames and passwords aren't legitimate websites. Uh, so that's, um, that's a great reason. And you'll notice that when Terry visited that site, you know, uh, his browser or password manager knew he was at a correct website and pre-filled in his details, right? This is not a, you know, this is not a downside, this is a positive. It means that Terry doesn't have to use the mental energy to work out whether he's at a legit website or not, because it's, it's, you know, it's a website he's familiar with using. Uh, and then this is of, often the, the problem, right? A phishing website will try to look exactly like your normal login website, except it's on a domain that you've not used before. And with federated identity, you can concentrate all of the locations that people will type their username and passwords down uh, to just one Yeah. So what's um, NREN's next uh, steps forward with regards to building their federation out? You are asking you me? Yes, yes. Uh, someone from NREN to so we are let us know what your plans are. Yes, right now we have a limited resource and we are trying to increase our uh, resources first. And uh, still we are uh, uh, new, we are uh, uh, doing some uh, re research, not a survey. Uh, one project is a pan project is running, uh, sorry, and a second project is running. That's we are extending our uh, network to the nationwide. So, uh, exactly. So, and we are also non, we are in uh, expanding our EduDome to the non members as well, for uh, those who are non members. And then we ask them to be a member. So, that is our strategy. So if uh, we don't have any link, um, but we, we offer them, uh, you can use this EduDome for uh, access uh, centralized uh, authentication. Uh, we are providing this. Uh, uh, you know about that we are finding IDPs for them as well, so in our, as, as a BBS server. So we are uh, expanding that, and uh, we are also uh, planning some increase some resources and uh, making some more members. And we also uh, this is the, the time, and we are also going to organize one training for other members as well. So about this uh, during first. So how, what is the benefits and other things? Mm -hmm. Okay. So it's just turned 4.35 in Brisbane, where we are in Australia, it's in the afternoon here, and it's it's the weekend ahead of us. Um, so I um, hope you guys have a a good rest of the day and uh, a good weekend coming up. And uh, I think it's time for us to sign out. Uh, unless you have any final questions you want to pop us, we'll um, no say farewell. Okay. So we'll be in touch with you. Thank you very much, uh, team. Uh, thank you, uh, all the participants from uh, engineers from our institutions. I think I am going to wrap up the uh, session. Uh, thank you all. <laughs>